Church of the Ascension. Some of us have just returned from convention. France. And we had similar situations where services began a bit later because of tech or because of somebody not coming in on time or whatever. So let us be thankful that we're here this morning together and sing joyfully. Alleluia, sing to Jesus, verses 1, 3, and 4.
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Eine Lesung aus dem Buch des Propheten Jeremia. Denn so spricht der Herr, jubelt über Jakob mit Freuden und jauchzet über das Haupt unter den Völkern. Ruf laut, rühmt und sprecht, Herr, hilf deinem Volk, dem Rest Israels. Siehe, ich will sie aus dem Lande des Nordens bringen und sie und will sie sammeln von den Enden der Erde. Unter ihnen Blinde und Lahme, Schwangere und junge Mütter, dass sie als große Gemeinde wieder hierher kommen sollen. Sie werden weinen kommen, aber ich will sie trösten und leiten. Ich will sie zu Wasserbächen führen, auf ebenen Wege, auf dem sie nicht straucheln, denn ihr denn ich bin Israels Vater und Ephraim ist mein erstgeborener Sohn. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read the psalm responsively. I will begin. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But Jesus holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priest those who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints the Son, who has been made perfect for ever. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, 
he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, call him here. And they called the blind man saying to him, take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, my teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. It's great to be here. Reiner and I have been on a uh, whirlwind tour from Geneva, well, from the mountain, of course, to Geneva, to Nice, France, and back here to be at our family of faith, our family at Church of the Ascension. It's wonderful to be back with you and to share with you certainly a bit today, but also in the coming weeks, all of the amazing things that happened at convention. The readings today reflect everything we did. We came together after being away for a long time. If you listen carefully to the readings and to the theme, it's about faith, hope, and charity, and asking God to make us to follow God's commandments. All of the readings this morning are about affirmation of who we are, of our daily lives, but also of our life in Christ and where, which part of that is within us. Our daily lives are full of ups and downs. As we heard in the readings this morning, certainly from Jeremiah, we've been going through a time of being at home, coming back out in the world, trying to figure out how to maneuver ourselves, how to be comfortable in situations that were different than they are now, but are the comfortable situations that we're creating at this moment. Even at convention, we had to sit distanced. We had to wear our masks the whole time. We got to sing together and pray together and connect with one another again. We welcomed many new delegates and people to convention that had never been there before. So there's a newness, there's a renewal that's coming forth within our convocation from all the parishes to help us to answer the question that Jesus actually asked Bartholomeus in the gospel reading today. Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Our call in today's world right now at this moment is to ask Jesus that very same question. 
We're at a moment in our lives, in our daily life, in our parish life, in our life of the convocation, where we ask that same question, Jesus, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want Claire to do for you? What do you want Church of the Ascension to do for you? What do you want the convocation to do for you? And how do we respond? What are the ways in which we have learned over these, these months, this over a year of living separated? How have we used that time? For us at Church of the Ascension, it's not just been COVID. It's also been our interim situations. We've been in interim situation for over 18 months. This is a long time. And some people are tired. Some people are afraid to come back to church. Some people say, well, I'll come back when. I'll come back if. And hopefully they do. Because as wonderful and as great as Zoom is, there is nothing better for us to look around this building right now, and y'all can all look around and see who is here and realize how we have, how we have longed to connect again with one another, even if it's only with our eyes. In fact, I just realized I can take my mask off and show you my smile because I have been smiling since I got here this morning. This, this is what God's love does for each one of us. This is what it means to love God's commandment, is to be here, to be drawn back into this place week after week, whether we're on Zoom or whether we're blessed enough to be able to come here in person, to look at each other in the eye, to hear each other's voice, to see this red hat coming down the walkway and know that Deidre is here with us. To J see Jane coming in on her electric bike and say, yes, you made it again. To see our new council of vice president, David Case, appearing and being our organist when he's not the tech master. Everywhere we turn, God is blessing us. God is making us to love this commandment of love one another and be who we really are at the core of our being to make a change in this world. On Friday at convention, we had a day of intense conversations where we were put into groups with people we did not necessarily know. We were from all different parishes or missions, and we were asked three questions. And we were asked to look at where we are now, where we've been, and where we're going. And the last one was to dream crazy dreams that could happen in 10 years with, with no money restrictions, with, with no restrictions at all, and what fun that was. And as you can imagine, we all left convention exhausted. We left convention with new hope and with new commitment for what God is indeed asking us to do to make this a different world. So I want to do something I've never done before, but I would really like to share with you some of the words of our Bishop Mark Eddington that he shared with us in his address. Because he talked to us acknowledging the fact of our past 18 months, two years, being alone, being isolated. And as I said earlier, what God was putting in our hearts during that time of being by ourselves, being with ourselves with God actually. How do we use that time? What do we hear God calling us to do? 
this faith that has been deepened within us through an intentional prayer life that we never had enough time to do before. But also this, 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 this message of hope and eagerness to come back together again and to talk to one another and, and have a cup of coffee together and share with one another those things that are so precious and close to us as this family at Church of the Ascension. He brought us much hope. He brought us the reality of where we are right now. And one of the main lessons he taught us, one of the main things he reminded us of, which we heard through our scripture readings this morning, was the gift of listening. So what I'm going to read to you is not about listening, but what I want to invite you to do, us all to do, in the coming weeks, especially in anticipation of, of Dan's arrival, is to practice this art of gracious listening. Let's listen with our hearts. Let's allow that part of ourselves deep within us to open up and hear the words of the other that might just be the words of Christ speaking to us. I was in a conversation recently and I was talking about someone and the person with whom I was speaking made a really interesting comment. And the comment was this, Claire, are you looking at this person and listening to this person because you want this person to be like you are? Or are you actually listening and looking at this person to accept and be with that person as they are and what they have to teach you? That to me was very, very profound because we're so quick to look within our own worldview. We have our next priest in charge coming that we will welcome. And one of, our, one of our challenges, and it is a challenge, is for us to look at Dan and listen to Dan with the heart of Christ, with the ears of Christ, that we stop ourselves from being quick to say, well, why isn't he like us? Why does he use that language? Why is he doing that? But that we reach deeper within ourselves, which is this command that God wants us to love, that we see Christ in Dan as Dan seeks to see Christ in us. So I'll just give you a little treat. What I invite you to do is to, uh, when you get home or when you get off of Zoom, go to um, tech.europe.org tech and uh, read Mark's full address. It's beautifully done. Uh, if it's on YouTube, watch it because he has it with visuals that he actually created the whole thing himself. And it's worth it to listen to more than one time. He said, I'm going to read one sentence and I'm going to, to go to the last paragraph as the closing of the sermon today. He said, we still have the beautiful things we've created and that have been our path to a deeper relationship with God. And in these last months, God has been teaching us that the people Christ came to save probably aren't going to come in among us looking for those answers. But just like Jesus, we need to go out to them. So he continues, let us return. Let us be renewed by the love and the support we know in these communities, especially, I add, at Church of the Ascension, because we are special indeed. Let us listen constantly in prayer 
prayer that springs not from a longing to change God's mind, but to open our hearts. And then let us dare to venture back into the world to listen to the needs of the people held captive by our cynical culture and to walk as companions with the least, the last, and the lost. Amen. So please stand with me in confidence in our faith as Christ has confidence and faith in us. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate to the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in joy to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead Let us pray for the revealing of the reign of God in the world, now and always. In the beginning, here and now, in the future, creator of earth, sea and sky, kindle the fire of your spirit within us that we may be bold to heal and defend the earth and pour your blessing upon all who work for the good of the planet. God, giver of life, yeah. breath of life, receive our thanks for the beauty of our local habitat and all who dwell in it and grant us the wisdom and will to conserve it. God, giver of life, yeah. Source of life, heal and redeem the wounds of your creation and visit the places and people who suffer from our indifference, neglect and greed. God, giver of life, yeah. lover of all you have made, we thank you for the wondrous diversity of your creatures and we pray for their well-being. God, giver of life, yeah. 
author of the Book of Nature, receive our gratitude for places of restoration and healing and continue to bless those places that feed our lives and spirits. God, giver of life, wise creator whose works are full of mystery, give us wonder and appreciation for your creatures with whom we find ourselves in conflict. God, giver of life, giver of all good gifts, Awaken us daily to our dependence upon your bounty and make us always thankful for the abundance of your blessings. We give thanks today for Uli. We give thanks that the Convocation Convention was able to meet both in Nice and on screen. And we give thanks for our senior warden, Janet de Strelo, on the particular occasion that this is her birthday. God, giver of life, Amen. divine physician, heal our communities, especially those where neglect, greed, or violence inflict suffering upon people and other creatures. We pray for all those involved in the atrocities being committed in Tigray, Ethiopia, which is facing another crisis as many are now threatened with starvation. We pray for the population of Afghanistan dealing with the effects of the Taliban taking control of the country and all that that means, especially for the female members of the population. We pray for the population of Haiti as they deal with the aftermath of the earthquake and the continuing political and economic instability, including the recent kidnappings in their country. God, giver of life, yeah. Comforter of all the earth, sustain the people of this congregation who desire or need your presence and help. We pray especially for Jim Given, who had a bicycle accident last week. We pray for healing for Lizzie, Father Allen's daughter, following her injury in a road traffic accident. We pray for comfort and peace for Gretchen, Alan, Thomas and Alex as they support Lizzie. We also pray for her four colleagues who were also involved in the hit and run accident. We pray for a child. We pray for Tony and Aurora, for all doctors and nurses, and Ilsa and Wiebke. God, giver of life. Rock and refuge of all your creatures, receive into everlasting mercy all those who have died. God, giver of life. O oh Lord, we pray to you in gratitude and thanksgiving for the work of our vestry, the bishop and archdeacon, who, uplifted by your Holy Spirit, took careful, detailed steps to discern who should be called to be our new priest in charge. We pray too with joy that your servant Daniel Morrow has heard and answered the call. Grant him peace and strength as he makes this transition continuing to support him as he seeks to be a faithful pastor. Grant us wisdom and patience as we listen to your call to us and seek to reflect your welcoming embrace, sharing your grace and shining the light of Christ all around us. Together as Church of the Ascension and with your unfailing support, we stand ready to do the things you have given us to do. Bless us as we take this next step forward. We pray these things through Jesus Christ, your Son and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. As I said, some of us have had our place busy last few days. It was wonderful to be back where we belong. George, as you might have heard, mentioned that our, our awesome senior warden's birthday is today. And, and not to embarrass her, is there anybody else who had a birthday this week? Anybody on Zoom? Anybody, George? Paul, he had a birthday this week. Well, come on up and we'll sing happy birthday to both of y'all. You can come up. Come on, don't be shy. You only have a birthday once a year. That's okay. That's okay. So somebody needs to start us because if I start us, we'll all have to leave the church. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Whoa. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Paul. Happy birthday, Janet. I actually have quite a few announcements today. Um, as Claire has mentioned, we were at the Convocation Convention in Nice, and um, it was so intense. It's going to take a while for us to really process everything that went on. But it's important to note that Lois Schluckenbrook was uh, elected to the Council of Advice. that David Case was elected Chair of Council of Advice. And George Patrick was elected as lay observer to the Synod of the Diocese of Europe. So with Jess's uh, Chair of Combe and my Chair of the ICS, I think we have all the power of the convocation in our hands. <laughs> The bishop is looking at that. Um, but it just shows how much we are influencing what is going on in the convocation, and that's so important. So Lois and Steve will be writing a report um, of what went on that will be published in the bulletin, and I hope that you'll speak next week about that. And I'm also hoping that David will speak to the ministry initiative on race that he put together just an, he and his team a fabulous presentation and we have things to hand out we'll wait till next week david but if you could talk to that that would be excellent there's so much going on um for the rest of the announcements we do have all saints and all souls coming up 
So if you do want to read, have us read aloud the name of a loved one who has passed in this year, please get that to the church office by Wednesday, November 3rd. We have Bible study coming on the 19th. We still have the Book of Remembrance for D. if you have anything to add. Um, end of October is the deadline. And there's some important announcements about outreach and what is, is required or what is coming up, helping out at the TAFL, doing other things. So please talk to Barbara and Liz today. Um, the other announcements, Dan and Teresa have their visas, both of them. So Dan's first Sunday is still the 21st of November and they should arrive between the 12th and the 15th, depending on flights. Uh, today, we have coffee and cake in the Gemeindesaal, thanks to Liz and Barbara. It is 3G, please, um, getested, geimpft, or genesen. There are some schnell tests in the back if you don't have your pass with you, um, or if you would like to have your coffee outside, I'm sure that we can <laughs> arrange to hand it outside, but it looks wonderful, and thank you very much for doing that. It's great. Helen will be selling cards inside also. And I would like to invite Jane Shiring up here to talk about the basket for Dan and Teresa. Good afternoon, all you wonderful children of God. I'm going to, I'm just getting down. Okay. Today I came into church. And one of the first things I got was a bag of vegan vegetable dog treats. Now this could be, this is a funny gift. This is for Dan's basket and he has a dog. Now we probably need something for the cat. But I just wanted to throw out that um, we do need some things to fill up the basket. It's going pretty well. We have quite a few jars of homemade jam. We have some wine, we have chocolate, we have a gift certificate, um, well, a, a walk with Martin, and then there's someone who's invited them to dinner. Um, the kitchen won't be going in until the November 18th. So if anyone's in the mood to offer maybe a meal at their house for Dan and Teresa when, after they come, or dropping something off, or if you have a good shine for a restaurant that you like, um, they like art. Maybe someone wants to get um, some entrance, a gift certificate for, you know, um, tickets to the, you know, Brand Horse Museum or something. Um, there are lots of ideas out there. We've gotten some books on Bavaria, but if you have one on, on biking or hiking or taking walks, something like that. Um, we've gotten tea, chocolates. Um, yeah, the list is kind of endless. And for all of you on Zoom, if you can't um, make it into the church, I'm here pretty much every Sunday. Just get in touch with me because I will come and pick something up. I think this is worth it. So thank you very much. And keep on thinking creatively about gifts. So thank you. I mean, isn't this a wonderful blessed place to be? It's awesome. So I invite you to walk joyfully in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
up your heart. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places. Our true and loving God, through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, holy one of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning star sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings in all creation as we shout with joy. Are yours, creator of all, your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led, led them to a land of promise, of your grace. You gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us, a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends and said, take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all he has done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you destroyed our life. Christ Jesus, 
come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be so to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and truth. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ. In the fullness of time, gather us with all your saints into this joy of your true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say in that language closest to our hearts. Thy name, the kingdom come, thy will be done.
wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God, strengthen you to be Christ's hands and hearts in this world, in the name of the Holy Trinity, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks to God. Thanks to God.